Ms Kelly Armstrong has given notice of an urgent oral question to the Minister for Infrastructure. I would remind members that if they do wish to speak or to ask a supplementary question, they should rise continually in their places. The member who tabled the question will be called automatically to ask a supplementary. I will ask the clerk to read the question. To ask the Minister for Infrastructure, following his acceptance of the public inquiry and decision to progress for an update on the York Street interchange project. Thank you. I call the Minister for Infrastructure. Lord Concolia, I have just announced the publication of the public inquiry, uh, inspector's report, departmental statement and notice to proceed. This allows officials to begin consultation with key stakeholders, including the local community, in line with the recommendations in the inspector's report. The scheme will address a major bottleneck on the strategic road network replacing the existing signalised junction at York Street with direct links between the West Link, M2 and M3, three of our busiest roads here in the north. It will also separate strategic traffic from local traffic movements. The inspector, appointed to chair the inquiry to examine the case for and against the scheme, concluded that the case to replace the existing York Street junction had been demonstrated. The procurement process for the scheme is well advanced and was progressed in parallel with the statutory processes. The appointment of a contractor would aid discussions with the local communities around the impacts of the construction process. However, I will need to consider the funding for this project together with other priorities as part of my budget 2017 to 2021 considerations before deciding whether to award the York Street interchange contract. Concolia, the scheme remains a priority for me, and I am committed to do all that I can to deliver the scheme within the current financial context, working with the Finance Minister and other executive colleagues. I call Ms Kelly Armstrong for a supplementary. Thank you, Mr Speaker, and thank you very much today for your clarity. It is good to see the Minister here and to hear his update. But I would ask um, the Minister what criteria will be used to prioritise other... Sorry. What criteria will be used to prioritise other road building schemes over York Street interchange? It can be clarified just where it is in the priorities, because you've said in the statement that York Street is a priority, but there's no money for it. Others are proceeding. Minister, uh, for, for a point of clarity, I, I don't think anywhere in my statement I've said that there is no money for York Street. I have said that going forward it has to fit uh, within a programme of works that we need to do more to ensure that we have the funding, not just to start a particular project, to ensure that we have funding in place to the end. With regards to criteria to, to road schemes, I have four infrastructure flagship projects agreed by the executive. Uh, that is the A5 and the A6, the Belfast Transport Hub and the Belfast Rapid Transit. They are the four infrastructure priorities for this executive, but that is not to take away from the fact that there are other large-scale projects, such as York Street Interchange, such as the Newry Southern Relief Road, such as the Ballinahinch Bypass, the Cookstown Bypass, the Enniskillen Bypass, the Narrow Water Bridge, investment in public transport, invest billions of pounds investment in water infrastructure. There are huge demands on the infrastructure budgets, uh, all with competing demands. It is my job and uh, my department's job to put a priorities in place that we can deliver as much as we can with the, the finances that are available to us uh, and do that strategically in the years ahead. Call Mrs. Jenny Palmer. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I welcome the Minister's statement today. What a difference a month makes in policy and direction. Can the Minister give assurances that when he meets the Chancellor on Brexit at implications, York Street interchange will be the top of his priority? Well, I've just outlined uh, to the previous member, uh, I have a number of competing priorities. Uh, as I said, with the, four exe the executive flagship projects, you know, we've seen last week with the launch of the consultation in the Belfast Transport Hub, um, and going to Mid Ulster tomorrow, we're top of the agenda, no doubt, will be a Cookstown bypass. Uh, and the progression of the A5 and the A6. Everybody inside of this chamber will have different priorities. I have no doubt that the member would love to raise the possibility of a spruce field bypass with the Chancellor if she had the opportunity. We all have different competing priorities, uh, and certainly as a department, we now have to put in place a programme of works that meets the needs of our economy, and, but that does so in a regionally balanced way. That Whenever I say I'm going to address the infrastructure deficit 
uh, particularly in the West, that I mean what I say. The projects such as the A5 and the A6 uh, you know, s still maintain a priority with me, as does the Belfast hub uh, and the BRT. But that is not to suggest that we won't have any money at all for any other projects. And of course, I want to be in a position to be able to deliver the likes of the York Street uh, interchange. Uh, I know previous members and, uh, have suggested, uh, and you're hinting and alluding that, uh, that somehow the Belfast is being neglected all of a sudden, that this priority uh, in the West is taking over, which again is, is not true. I, I, I will spend more money in Belfast than any other town, city, or village in the years ahead. Uh, Belfast sits primed to receive money from the BRT, the Belfast Hub, investment in water infrastructure, whatever it may be. So let members be assured that we will not forget Belfast in the years ahead. Call Mr. William Humphrey. Thank you much, Mr. Speaker. And I thank the Minister for his statement to the House today. I welcome the Minister's acceptance of the public inquiry's findings. York Street Interchange is absolutely vital in terms of connecting Northern Ireland, the Port of Belfast, the M2, the M3 with West Ulster, with our airports. And it's hugely important for business, in particular the haulage industry and tourism. Now that the case has been demonstrated, and now that the pure procurement is well advanced, negotiations with the EU ongoing and the assurances given by the Treasury in London, can I ask the Minister when will we be in a position to come to this House and tell us that work is going to start on the York Street interchange? Well, I, uh... Like, like many in this house, I hope to be in a position in the coming weeks and months to, to be able to do that. Um, you have made reference, of course, obviously to uh, particular assurances that the British Treasury believe they have made around a number uh, of projects. I am yet to be convinced, uh, having met the, the British Secretary of State and others. One assurance, however, from the British Treasury that I am very much aware of is the wave of austerity that is coming our direction for at least the next five years or longer. That is going to put huge strain on my department as well as other departments. Uh, we have seen the effects of austerity to this point. Uh, there is nothing to suggest it won't be, uh, if anything, the same, if not worse, in the years ahead. So these are the sorts of uh, considerations I have to, to take into effect when I am putting together my programme of works uh, for the years ahead. Call Mr Jerry Kelly. I thank the Minister for his uh, answer of denial and I would like to uh, welcome the decision made to uh, make progress in this very important uh, project. Uh, bearing in mind uh, what he has said about uh, funding, there is an opportunity, I would argue, and I hope the Minister will agree, that, uh, to consult further with the uh, residents in the area who are mostly affected by this. They have some concerns about the, uh, the plans that they have seen. And uh, it will not be a big effort, I think, to make the adjustments uh, necessary so that the uh, project goes ahead uh, with uh, uh, less impact on the local residents. Yes, absolutely. Uh, aside from banking the progress to date, uh, you know, this written ministerial statement also enables my department to move ahead now to engage with the local community as set out by one of the recommendations in the report, also to examine ways to increase the amount of cycling provision that any new uh, infrastructure at this particular junction uh, would have. Um, engaging with the community is very, very important. Um, certainly we have now the potential to realign the road away from the Little George Street uh, to look at antisocial behaviour at the steps in North Queen Street. Uh, and also uh, the sympathetic uh, and the need for sympathetic treatment of the Bur McGurk's Bar Memorial, together with architectural and landscaping enhancements to local structures uh, and the rear of properties at Little George Street going forward. All vitally important work, uh, and as I say, making this statement today allows my department now to re-engage with the community to take this forward in the months ahead. Call Ms Nicola Mowen. Um, can I ask the Minister why he cited Brexit as the reason initially for putting this project on hold, given the commitment from the UK Treasury to fund any structural projects awarded EU funding beyond the point of any Brexit? I never once made an announcement that this project was on hold. What I said was the procurement process for this pro project had been lengthened, uh, that that allowed me to take stock of the financial and geopolitical situation that we now face ourselves in. The member will no doubt admit that we are in a very uncertain uh, political times, financially as well as anything else. Uh, the member has also flagged up assurances. Let me go back. The first available time that I have to apply for European funding for this is at some point in 2018. We are not yet sure when that will be in 2018, but we can be sure of one thing. Article 50 will be triggered long before 2018 probably at least a year before I can even apply for any European funds whatsoever. The CEF fund is a highly competitive fund. 
member states have to fight uh, and to compete with each other to, to win these funds. There is nothing to suggest that we would be successful in any outcome with that. Uh, the likelihood of the EU funding a project in a particular region that is in the mouth of leaving a particular uh, EU through the Brexit uh, is highly unlikely. As I said, now that is only 40 per cent. So the, the assurances we have from the British Treasury, I don't think, stand up to that. I think they're in the mouth uh, of the leaving. But as I said, aside from that, that is only for 40 per cent. There is also 60 per cent that also has to be found. Call Mr Stuart Dixon. Thank you, Minister, for coming to the House today. Minister, how can you justify your failure to prioritise the busiest road junction in Northern Ireland and what, for most people in this House, should and must be, on any scale or standard, the single most important infrastructure project that you should have on your desk? Uh, the, the, the member might have missed the news, but today I've just announced to proceed with this particular infrastructure project. So if that's not a given priority, I don't know what is. I, I would also, it's clear that the Alliance Party don't have any political reps outside of Belfast also, because w when you look at it, whenever I go around the north, when you speak to people, when you speak to people, when you speak to people in Derry, when you speak to people in Enniskillen, when you speak to people in Strabane, when you speak to people in Noma and different places, they want other areas to be prioritised, they want other projects to prioritise. They've, wait, they've waited decades for roads like the A5 and the A6. When motorways stopped in places like Craig Avon and Randallstown for no particular reason, they've waited decades for that. So I think the illusion that the member make is entirely false. Call Mr. Raymond McCann. Uh, you, Mr. Can the minister uh, confirm that construction of the York Street scheme, whenever it begins, will not be delayed by being divided into three phases? Unlike, for example, the A6 motorway or the railway from Coleraine to Derry? Uh, certainly discussions, and uh, we're talking here, and there is no doubt that this is one of the busiest junctions we have here in the north. Any construction process will have to be done in tandem with a huge amount of vehicles going through this. It's going to have to be managed very, very carefully. And I have no doubt that the, the issues the member have raised will be part of the discussion with officials and engineers uh, as we decide what is the best way to go forward with, it, with the construction works. Call Mr Jim Allister. It does mean that the minister has got over his hissy fit of um, scaremongering about this project. The Chancellor has been very clear. He said that he will promise to underwrite EU funding for all projects signed off before Brexit. He couldn't do anything more. And yet the minister says in his statement, I believe this does not go far enough. What does he want? Well, I said there's, there's two parts to this, and the first part we certainly want is an end to the austerity that's been crippling departmental budgets in this place uh, for long many years. The members may touch, but members know full well what austerity is doing to communities, not just here but throughout, uh, throughout Britain. Uh, the second point is, and I've, I've touched on this with, with members previously, uh, the assurances talk about signing on, uh, projects that are signed off before Brexit. All likelihood, and we, we don't know, we, we've just seen today, obviously in the news, that not even the British Cabinet know what's happening, but in all likelihood, Brexit is going to be some stage early 2019. The earliest I can even apply for any European funding is at some point in 2018. It may take a year, it may take months before that's even signed off. So the uncertainty around this isn't imaginary. It's not part of a hissy fit. As I said, I want to progress with this project, but I'm not going to put funds into a project that I don't have enough money to complete. Call Mr. George Robinson. Mr. Speaker, I thank the Minister for his statement. And can the Minister, as much as possible, ensure that local contractors will be employed to build this very important routes project that will also benefit the local construction industry? Absolutely. You know, you know, obviously, we'll go through a tender and process, and you know, uh, the procurement progresses are advancing well, as I've outlined. But there's no doubt when we invest this, you know, serious amount of money such as this into the construction works, it has a it has a very good knock-on effect. I think for every pound that's invested uh, in construction projects, it creates a four-pound knock-on effect for the local economy. Uh, so there's no doubt that a project like this, like many other our projects, and we will be investing hundreds of millions of pounds uh, in the years ahead in these projects. And this will have a great effect for the local economy and our local construction industry also. Call Mr Steve Aiken. I thank the Minister for his comments so far and thank you very much indeed for the U-turn. I think it's excellent. Uh, 
One of the issues I would like to raise and a question I would like to ask you is obviously the Northern Ireland Chamber of Commerce, the CBI and virtually every business organisation in Northern Ireland see this as a vital piece of infrastructure. This is not a question of infrastructure for Belfast, this is a question for infrastructure all of Northern Ireland and indeed all of Ireland north of Drogheda. May I ask the Minister when he's putting together his priorities, he ensures that the York Street interchange is up there with the A6, the A5 and the other priorities there. <laughs> As the member himself uh, has even just outlined himself there, the, the A5, the A6, and other priorities, the list is endless. You know, I, I engaged uh, regularly with the CBI and others, and alongside talking about projects such as Yorkgate or York Street, they talk about the Southern Relief. They talk, and more, more probably more often than not, when it comes to roads, they talk about the massive investment that's needed in water and wastewater infrastructure, uh, in energy security. That obviously the Minister of the Economy will be dealing with a number of issues. There are a huge amount of priorities. There are more priorities than what we have money for. That's why when I make the reference about the need for the British Treasury to end the wave of austerity that is crippling our budgets. Uh, again, this isn't skirt mongering politics, this isn't hissy fits, this is reality. Our budgets are under serious pressure. They have been for a long number of years and they look set to be under more pressure in the years ahead. So I would say to the member, uh, and I know he has colleagues uh, at Westminster now, uh, that we use our collective power as elected reps to send a united message to, to leave, to, 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 to protect um, our budgets and we need to see stimulus. But it's not enough that we see a capital stimulus. We can't see the constant attack on our resource budgets uh, and the to let us to get on uh, with building regional uh, growth uh, for all of our people. Uh, but again, as I said, I engage regularly with the CBI and the, the business community uh, and the message is very clear. As well as projects such as the A5 and the A6, we need to see serious investment in our water infrastructure uh, and other projects. I only wish I had all the money to deliver all of these projects. Members, that concludes this item of business.